What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day 56 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, I'm going to be working on uh, bevel gears, but hopefully I'm doing them a little bit more simple. That way, they work just a little bit better due to my graphics and the collision system. Um, having these beveled, not say, gears interact at an angle and not really truly beveled gears, uh, still able to get that 90 degree uh, change of rotation. What I hope to do maybe is uh, build this downstream and maybe build a uh, differential gear system, but we'll, uh, we'll hold that off for, for downstream. All right, so let's go ahead and make this. So I'm gonna do is create a new sketch and using C, let's go ahead and make a circle. Let's make this 50 millimeters. And rather than doing a triangle, I'm just going to do a square. Now, the teeth on this, uh, the square tooth, is going to be pretty large. We need to make sure a couple things. One, that my object, my geometry is still fully contained. And you can tell that by that uh, light blue shading right here. And instead of having to go through and repeat all this stuff, let's make Fusion do it for me. So I'm going to click on Create and Circular Pattern. I'm going to click on these three pieces of geometry. And then I'm going to click on Center Point, And I want it to rotate about here. We are going to bump this up until we get an appropriate number on that spacing. I'm kind of eyeballing this right now. Um, now, what I see is this, if I bump it up to nine, I think this tooth is now wider than this gap right here. And so I know there might be some collision issues there. So just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna bump it down to eight. Let's go ahead and make an axle for my center here and a quick finish sketch. So I know I've got a bunch of intersecting geometry, but just to make it easy, I'm gonna hit E on my keyboard, highlight it all. And now, if you see my center axle or my center hole right here isn't um, is doing what I want it to do, so I'm going to hold down Control on my keyboard, and I'm going to deselect that center hole. And see, I didn't need to go in here and trim all these other pieces up. It's just doing kind of as I need. I think we're going to do 10 millimeter extrusion and make this a new component. All right. Let's go ahead and create another sketch, and let's throw, I'm going to go ahead and make that axle. So I'm going to make a 10 millimeter axle, E on my keyboard, and let's go ahead. And I'm going to, one key thing is do a symmetric extrusion. That way I know that the face of this gear is lined up with the center of that part. It helps me downstream when I start doing my constraints and my joints. Um, it's just something very, very, very small, but it tends to help out a whole lot. And I'm going to click on OK. All right, so what we've got is component one. Let's go ahead and call this gear. And component two, let's call this axle. All right. That looks OK for the most part. Now, instead of having to repeat this stuff, let's make Fusion do that work for me. So I'm going to click on Move Copy. And we're going to copy the components, not just the bodies. Because if you copy the bodies, Fusion thinks that those two pieces are one component, and I want them to be separate components. So when I copy them as components, it will make new components over here. And everything looks all right. Now, let's go ahead and add this is oddly lined up. Let's go ahead and do this. Rotate it a little bit. Bring it around. Probably need to rotate just a hair bit more. Actually, I'm going to have to do is bring this to zero, rotate it 90 first. Something doesn't look quite right. Uh, there we go. Let's make that straight up first. There we go. Alrighty. And now I'm going to go ahead and just bring this on over and down. Now, I know this, there's some collision going on here, and we'll fix that in a moment. I just want to give that spacing to be approximately where I want them to be. And I'm going to think that is looking OK for now. We can try to adjust this just a little bit more to make it snug, uh, but I might run into some collision issues. You can edit and tweak kind of as you want there. But also I'm going to move this back out just a hair. Click on OK. Now, when you do anything, 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 any design, 
where you have moving parts. One part always has to be grounded. So the parts we don't want to move, based on what I've built so far, is these are these axles. So I'm going to right click over here on axles and ground both of these. And that means when I try to move these axles, they're going nowhere. You might run into a tricky part because um, some of those mechanically inclined people is like, well, I need my axle to move. That's the point of a bevel geared system. Well, then you would need to have something ground downstream. That way it doesn't move the whole uh, component. So I can still move these. And that's okay because that's actually going to be helpful when I'm doing my joints. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's move them out of the way. Capture position. Let's do a joint. Now you notice my axles disappear. The reason being is the way we talk when we're doing those joints, we want something to do something with something else. That first thing we click on, if it is a revolute, the first thing is going to spin. If it's a slide, the first thing is going to slide. And so since these are grounded, uh, when we try to actually do something, Fusion knows, well, they can't move, so I'm not going to let you click them anyways. So we're going to select, and I'm going to select this front uh, face, the front, front hole, and I'm going to click the center of that. Now, the reason I did that symmetrical extrusion is because I know this spacing already works. So that's just kind of a, um, an idea of when you create parts and design intent, um, often symmetrical extrusions will work better than an asymmetrical or a, a one-sided extrusion. So click OK. So we'll click on joint. Let's click on the, the center of that face. So we can click on the, the, there's technically three different places we can click, but I'm gonna click on the center of this face and the center of that axle. We want it to revolute. Looks okay. Now we only have one problem is we're breaking physics right here. These are spinning through each other. So let's go ahead and under assemble, let's enable contact sets. Now Fusion is gonna we're telling Fusion what pieces cannot go through each other. So I'm gonna enable all contact sets. So none of my components can go through each other. They're all just supposed to play nice. And so there we go. Oh, there we go. Got some nice smooth action here. And that looks all right. Now, if you want, you can kind of clean up. You see there's a little bit of play here. That's just based on the tooth size. If you're doing some reverse engineering, you should have the tooth size already um, or some dimensions. So it'll take care of that problem. All righty, let's see if I can and if it'll let me. Uh, sometimes I have a problem on being able to select this um, command to actually edit and show the model being working. So if the pieces are in my way, I'm actually going to make them invisible and I'm going to make them inactive. This allows me to right click on that joint and animate the whole model. While it's animated, we can turn it back on and there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll be it for this video. We've made a bevel or sorry, a 90 degree turn, kind of an easier attempt at beveling. When it comes to those triangle shaped teeth uh, yesterday, it was just a little much for Fusion to think with all those collisions. Um, also, my computer probably wasn't handling that process very well. So I found out if we did square teeth um, and gave a little bit of gap in there instead, they tend to work just a little bit better. All right, guys, that'll be it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will see you on the next video.